what is going on everybody it is Bucky and welcome to another amazing tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about a new data type now as you can see I already deleted all the extra crap that we didn't need in our uh, other tutorial all I have left is the two object declarations and releasing the objects but for now let me just uh, type some crap in here so I can explain now we already learn about some other data types like int that holds like integers like 1, 3, 54 and we also learn about another character data type which stored like letters like W and you know Y and characters like that and there's also a whole bunch of other data types most of them work with numbers like some work with numbers with decimal points some work with smaller numbers big numbers but the data type we want to talk about today is a data type that's very important to polymorphism. It's called the ID, or some people call it id, data type. Now, the id data type is kind of a generic data type. It can store pretty much anything you want it to store. So if you put id variable, it can pretty much store any variable you want. So again, id can pretty much store data of any type it's a generic data type now since it is a generic data type it not only can work with variables but you can also you know create methods that can uh, say you have a method called method and you pass it in a value called apples it can also have a return type of id so again like you see this id data type can pretty much uh, you know pretty much do anything it's really dynamic but why am I telling you this and why is this useful for this tutorial well not only can it store you know variables and be used in methods but it can also be used to store objects of any type huh it can be used to store objects so let's check this out let's make an id um, variable called tuna see now tuna isn't equal to anything but I said that it can store objects of any type so let's set it equal to the object n and remember n is an object from the numbers class so since now tuna is equal to n does that mean that we can use tuna to call methods from the numbers class like print hmm let's see if this works go ahead and say that and whoa check it out now we just made this weird id data type that can pretty much store anything called tuna and now we made it into a numbers object and they can actually call methods from the numbers class that is pretty cool right there but say we were uh, tired of that and we want to set tuna equal to an object from another class we want to set it equal to a member from the characters class so does this mean we can actually change it halfway through our program and call methods from the characters class that would be crazy if we can do that let's go ahead and build and run that save and whoa check this out halfway through the beginning of the program the same object belonged to the numbers class and then halfway through it switched and now it started calling methods from the characters class that is pretty cool right there that is some pretty awesome stuff so I know you're saying alright if you put tuna print and it did this and it put tuna print and it did something else how does it know exactly what print to do well check this out whenever you call a method from any object it's built into your system what class that object belongs to so currently right here this object belonged to the numbers class so that's why I called the numbers print method and later on when we change it to C from the characters class this tuna object now belonged to the characters class so that is why it called print from the characters class so the cool thing about this is with polymorphism and the ID or id type this one object can access methods from as many different classes as you want it to and you're not only restricted to one object accessing one class's methods and variables so that is the beauty of polymorphism working along with id id type so um let's see if there's anything else i want to uh, yeah i mean that's pretty much it so i mean this isn't really useful in this program right here this is because i just gave you guys like the most basic bare bones example i could but where 
in the real world program and would you use this? Well, let me give you guys a quick example. Say you have a bunch of different classes for a bunch of different shapes and you say circle, square, triangle, rectangle, octagon, all of those classes had methods in them called draw and when you call the method draw it would either draw a circle on the screen or a triangle or a rectangle depending on what method or what class you are using it on well the cool thing about this is you could set tuna equal to objects of each of those classes and just by putting tuna draw it might draw a circle tuna draw it might draw a rectangle tuna draw it might draw a triangle or an octagon or anything else so later on you can see that instead of having a bunch of different objects do it it's going to be easier just to have one object loop through and call that one method and it'll do a bunch of different things depending on what class it belongs to and I know that's confusing right now but you know I thought I'd give you guys an example but um, for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe I know this may seem confusing but when we get programming later it'll uh, clear it up for you so if you have any questions ask me on my forum below there's a link to all the source code from this tutorial below in the link um, thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next tutorial